Hello, my dearest, dearest friends, and welcome to our channel. This is our channel, right? So that means you subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed, click that subscribe button now. You know, so yesterday I was uh, talking to a group of single ladies, and it turned out to be a very interactive and somewhat life transforming session for even me and it's out of that that i decided to make this video this morning and i called it how to be single when you don't want to be <laughs> how to be single when it's not your choice you would rather be married now i'm going to give you just six quick points number one Accept that there are certain things in life that are beyond your control. You just need to accept that. That being married sometimes is way out of your control. It's not because you are not dressing well. It's not because you are not eloquent. It's not because you have a shitty attitude. It's just sometimes that's just how life goes. And you must get to that point where you accept that some things are just not under your control. And then I thought of the serenity prayer that was uh, developed by Reinhold Nebor. And this is what he said. He said, O oh God and Heavenly Father, grant to us the serenity of mind to accept that which cannot be changed, courage to change that which we can change, and wisdom to know the one from the other in Jesus' name. Now, there are certain things you just can't change. There are certain things that, no matter how hard you try, it's not within your control. You must get to that point where you know that, okay, getting a husband or getting a wife sometimes is way out of my control, and you are able to accept that. Number two, stop looking to relationships to define you. There are so many young people, single people, maybe even going older in years, where you, you think that your sense of self-worth, your sense of value is tied to your being in a relationship. That's not true. You are valuable all by yourself. You don't need to be in a relationship to be a valuable person. God values you as a person, as an individual. And if you go right back to the beginning of time, God didn't make the first people as couple. Adam was created as an individual. His wife was created as an individual. I know that there are societal pressures and all sorts of societal, you know, prejudices and, you know, stereotypes that want to push you to want to think that being single is like there's something wrong with you. Honey, there's nothing wrong with you. There is absolutely nothing wrong wrong with you and so don't accept that societal programming maybe in your place of work you are teased or at home you are even hounded oh when are we going to eat your cake and all of that don't accept that now please listen sometimes you know that you are educated you are smart you are everything i mean you have the looks you have everything but that's significant other is just not coming it's no fault of yours of course i know sometimes it's because some people are just not doing what it takes they are not dressing properly they are not uh, they have the wrong attitudes okay towards you know the opposite sex that one is there but by and large you must not accept that your life is defined by your being in a relationship you are significant you are fearfully and wonderfully made number three find your passion find your passion find something to do that inspires you something that sets your heart racing something that gives you energy you know something about finding your passion is that it gives you energy and you know passionate people are interesting people they are people that people want to uh, gravitate towards because there's just something about them there's a life there is a bubble about their lives you find something you are passionate about live while you are alive don't 
because marriage hasn't happened, you sit down there and you are going to endure life. Honey, you have just one life to live. You have just one single life to live. You need to live it on purpose. Marriage or no marriage. Make up your mind that you are going to truly live your life. And if it means that there's no opposite sex in your life in terms of being married, then face it and go on and live your life. The most painful thing to me is to see a single lady becoming so despondent, so discouraged, so, you know, looking so harassed because Mr. Wright hasn't shown up. And let me tell you, honey, many times there are certain men who would leverage on that to abuse you because they know you are desperate. So they come, oh, they promise you marriage, 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 and they just use you and dump you. That's not God's will for your life. So you must make up your mind that I will find one thing, that thing that I will be passionate about. So the first thing towards actually being successfully single is to cultivate a life worth living. Your life is worth living. Cultivate it. Number four, count your blessings. Count your blessings. There are, you know, and you, you need to be thankful. You must develop this attitude of gratitude. It just, it just brings out that inner beauty in you. Many times, you know, just thinking of this thought of, oh, marriage hasn't happened yet. Marriage hasn't happened yet. Sometimes it makes you to lose sight of some good things that have happened in your life. I mean, if you look at your life, you will see that there are certain great things that have happened. But if you are just so overwhelmed with the thought of getting married, you will lose sight of those awesome things. Now, so it's getting towards the end of the year and you're like, oh God, I thought what's going to happen this year. What about if you sit back and think of all the great things that did come through for you this year? The songwriter said, count your blessings, name them one by one. And my darling, it will absolutely astound you what God has done. I mean, there are great things that have happened in your life this year. Be thankful. Don't just stand on this one thing that hasn't yet happened to make you all grumpy and discouraged and despondent and sad. And unfortunately, sometimes people even get into depression because marriage hasn't yet happened. That shouldn't be your story. Number five, be a go-giver. Don't just sit down there and just wait, oh, marriage, marriage, marriage. What of if you throw yourself into life? If you are a believer, throw yourself into the end time harvest. Throw yourself into kingdom service. Throw yourself into being a, a, a person that is a, a, a value adder. You are adding value to people's lives. You are adding value to your church. You are adding value to whatever association you, you belong in. What will happen is that it will make you so happy, you will be so shocked. Now, this shutting yourself up in your house and crying and, you know, wetting your pillows. Yeah, every once in a while, if you want to do that, but don't make it a habit. There is really no need. Okay, there is no need. You will find out that when you begin to give and to just give, you would cultivate such powerful relationships with other people that will become so significant in your life. I'm telling you the truth. I'm speaking to you not just as a pastor today. I'm speaking to you as a mother that God wants your life to be significant. And significance is not just that I'm married. Yes, I'm thankful to God that I'm married, but my value as a human being, my significance is not in being married. My significance is the value that I'm bringing. At the end of the day, what truly makes you significant as a human being is the value that you bring. You need to go be a value adder. Go add value to people. Add value to your church. Add value to whatever group you belong in. Be a go giver. Live for a cause that is greater than you. That's how to live. Number six, ask God for grace. He giveth more grace. And you know what he says? 
He said, my grace is sufficient for you. There is always grace to help us navigate those seasons in our lives where we just don't understand what's going on. There is grace. And then Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your hearts. You need to get to that point where you really trust that God knows what he's doing. And then you learn to rest, rest, rest in God. And do you know that at the end of the day, your weight may even be shorter than you thought? That's the truth. Even if it is long, there is grace to wait. Do you understand me? Now, I want to pray for you. Father, thank you for every single person out there who is just in this space where navigating through this season, it's challenging. Lord, I ask that grace be released to them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I'm asking you, God, that you will strategically position them where they will meet that significant person with whom they will spend the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, my dear, for watching till the end. Now, listen, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, do subscribe and i would like to hear from you drop a comment in the comment section below and do watch out for my next video god bless you